Hi guys, this is Cash and I'm checking in with you from Frankfurt, Germany with Ignite Thermogenic Fat Burner. This is my little secret to keeping lean and having good energy throughout my busy days while I travel. So I want you guys to be sure to check out Ignite, especially if you're trying to get yourself in shape for this summer. Oh, Ignite is gonna get you into bikini body shape. You know, I gotta show you guys a bit of what's going on. Ignite is gonna help you get the results that you want. You're gonna love this product. I certainly do. So I'll put the link down below for the website. Be sure to check them out on Instagram and use my promo code to get great discounts. Check in with you guys soon. How you doing? Welcome to Chaos Nutrition old school training what's going on guys hey listen we're gonna talk about some good stuff today all right but first we gotta pay props to chaos nutrition because they're the ones who sponsored the show and the godfather of chaos nutrition was once with five percent i tell you this all the time and there's a few of you guys Okay, then when I bring up Big Frank's name, they're like, who's Big Frank? I never seen no big... Fucker Big Frank is bigger than Rich Piano. I thought he was 6'5", excuse me, 6'4", he corrected me. But the guy's like 375, 365, something like that. And he's a monster. And I'm going to put his pictures here, okay? Just so you can see. Because a few of you will question me, like I'm bullshitting you. Okay? But Big Frank's with Chaos Nutrition, and Chaos Nutrition... With was once with 5%, was once with 5% boys, okay? The godfather of cast nutrition was once with one of Rich Piana's boys, okay? And they started their own thing. And if you go to chaosnutrition.com, you'll see what products they got and good shit they got, okay? Now listen to me. I don't go to expos, okay? I haven't been to expos. First of all, nobody's going to expos. It's corona bullshit, all right? Let me fix this camera for a second. Hold on. Jerry Ward. Speaking of Jerry Ward, look. Raw Nutrition. Um, raw TV. Whatever the fuck. But the guy fought at Chaos, Chaos Nutrition. If, if if they're ever doing a show, okay, over there. If Chaos Nutrition's at a show and I'm there, I'll be at their booth. Okay? So, that's how much I love Chaos Nutrition. Now, wait a minute. Hold on. We're going to talk about some other shit here. But So, ChaosNutrition.com. Go there. and Stop fucking around. Alright, let me get, let me get the, oof. oh shit, alright, well this is not an old magazine, but, one was Physique World, which they don't really make anymore, this one's not one of the old ones, that girl's kind of cute, alright, there you go, but you know, they got some good hot girls in some of these magazines, bro, let me tell you something, one was Physique World, do you guys remember this shit, they, they don't make it anymore, because you can go on the internet and you can look at girls like that, you know, you can go on the internet. Some of you guys don't like that. I like girls that are, like, built, you know, like, tight build, bikini girls, you know. Oh, this girl is so cute. Where is she? Wait, wait, where did she go? Meryl Artunic. Can you remember that girl? 
But the, did some of you guys ever remember this girl right there? Look, in the pink. Right there. See? Well, let's see if we get... You see her? She was a fucking cutie. Oh, my God. That's it. Look at that shit, bro. It's her face. Fuck the body. Look at that shit. Did you see that shit? She was a... That's a fucking cutie. But anyway. Um... You know, I, I, you know, the girls are super jacked of my sisters, but, uh, this fucking magazine's got a lot of guys. I mean, I forget about it, I can't even, anyway, one was the sequel. If I start showing you all the fucking, all the girls in this fucking magazine, forget about it. I go, I spend the whole day doing that. Where we go, hold on, don't mind me reaching over this fucking shit. Alright, look, ready? Dude, I show you this a lot, Muscle Digest, my boy Rory Meyer. He's the biggest fucking guy, bro, in Gold's Gym, bro. Right here. He's not, no, it's not Roy Lito, but he's always in this magazine. But look at his shit, okay? Look at how girl, that's the, I, that's, I like that bill right there. Okay? See that? That's old school, bro. This muscle mag, wait, this muscle digest, what year is this? Well, this is 1982. So this is more of the newer ones. Okay? But, fuck, I just dropped it. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, look, look, here's the 1982. Was it Mr. Olympia? Yeah, look, look at all these fucking guys, bro. Look, 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 look. Ready? Who's the fucking guys right there? Look, I can't. I'm trying to show you who all these guys are. Can you see? Okay. Robbie Robinson. Droid Calendar. Chris Dickerson. Danny Padella. Franco Colombo. Okay, and, and uh, Tom Platts. Look at that shit, man, right there. Look at that. Look at look at Padella. Look at Danny Padella, bro. Okay. Franco Colombo. Look at those bitch tits on him. Okay. Remember that? You got the bitch tits. But anyway, it's hard for me to show you this that picture because of the way it is. Wait, what was that fuel here? I just saw some shit in here. Body fuel, okay. Forget that. Um Look at do you remember these kind of ads, bro? Dr. Gordon Wong, he was in there with all the steroids and shit like that, but, uh, dude, you remember, they, uh, that's what I liked about this magazine, they used to talk about juice a lot, bro, they used to talk about, who's this fucking guy again, Jesse Gutierrez, or, or good, whatever the fuck, but I, rem I remember him, I just don't, there you go, they were nice physiques, though, it was a nice physique he had, look at Bob Paris, a young Bob Paris, I think he's when he went to Mr. California, yeah, Mr. K right, Mr. What is it? Mr. Southern California, not even Mr. California. A young Bob Paris. Look at that shit right there. Look, 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 look. Okay, that's a young Bob Paris, right there. That's Bob Paris. Okay, right there. Okay, you see him down there. Stop fucking around. That's a young Bob Paris, bro. But I love these magazines because they always had the fucking best. They took about steroids and shit before anybody else talked about steroids. You know what I mean? This is like, look, the, here's a poster for the 1982 Mr. America. Look at that, okay? Yeah, there's your dates, the times. Look at that shit, okay? Where it is. That's the 1982 Mr. America. What am I doing here? I don't know if I showed you this one already. I don't know. I'm not sure who the fuck this guy is. This is 77. I, I, dude, I, I can't get to the box with all the ones that I was starting to show you with the 1940s and 30s. They're, they're over here, but the, this fucking room. I just found, by the way, I just found my Paul DeMeo post. I've been fucking, I just had a fight with my girlfriend because she has it hidden under all this shit. She moved Paul DeMeo. So we almost didn't have Paul DeMeo in this show. So there he is. That's my boy, Paul DeMeo. We give him props and love every show. Okay. Anyway, here's a muscle, this guy in a muscle diet. What the fuck? This is 1977. Look, look at the physiques. Nice hair on this chick. <laughs> anyway, but look at the physiques, though. You see, this is the way the muscle magazine used to look when I first got into bodybuilding. Look, look. That's the physiques, bro. Who is that? Floyd Odom. And then, uh, hold on. Remember when dudes used to suck in in rib cages like that? Look at that gold guy. Look at him. But that's this is what we're talking about. Um, is that Bob Hoffman? It is. It's Bob Hoffman. <laughs> I met him. <laughs> oh shit! I'm fucked up. 
Uh, sorry, guys. Wait a minute. I'm just trying to find some good shit. Look at Robbie. This is Robbie Robbins. I think I showed you this already. Right? Yeah, I did. Fuck. I'm stupid. Forget about it. Forget I just showed you that. All right, here. Here's another one. Look. Let's look at another one. John Arenita. This guy, I seen him in person training with Roy Liedermeyer. That's what made me bring up his name. That's one of his guys. This is another guy who was like a superstar in the early, early, early age. Won the Teenage Nationals and all that stuff. Won the Nationals. Look at him. John Arenita. What year is this? 82. World Championships. Look, wait, let's see. John Arenita. Do you guys remember that guy? See, you old... Look at Corey Everson with Jeff Everson. Look what she looked like. Wait, this is before she had the facial surgery. Check that shit out. What a mug on her, bro. Look at that. You guys see that shit? Look at that mug. That's not the Corey Everson that we saw. Look at this Jeff Everson. That's not the Corey Everson that we saw later on with the hot face. Look at that shit, bro. Look. Look at that mug. Holy shit. Think the facial surgery helped her? Anyway, remember all these fucking supplement ads? Look. Look at this shit. Look at the supplement. You remember that shit? Hey, you, you guys don't remember. You fucking young guys. You don't, you don't, you don't have no clue. Okay, you guys don't know what the fuck you're looking at. I remember the shit, bro, like it was yesterday. Look, here's... Look, Jeff and Corey Everson again. Look. Okay? Look at that. Look at her mug. That's... Guys. Guys, that's Corey Everson. Look. Miss Olympia legend. That's her and Jeff Everson right there. Okay? Anyway, I had enough of that shit. So there you go. There you have it, all right? Let's get busy. All right. Here we go. First question. Greg. Oh, wait. This is from Cosmo8625. Greg, the dumbbell pullover... The dumbbell pullover has been considered the upper body version of the squat by many fitness experts. What's your opinion on that? I don't. I don't really like. To, I've done dumbbell pullovers. I understand it's. See, some guys do it to fucking work the lats, the lower part of their lat, like the part that curves like this. But other guys, when I was younger, we did it, and that's what I think you're referring to is for breathing. Okay, the breathing pullovers, uh, dumbbell pullovers, where you, you know, it helps to expand the rib cage. Like Schwarzenegger did him because he believed to expand the rib cage, but for most guys, it also hits the lower lat. Now, is it, would, would I consider that the fucking upper body version of squats? Uh, no. I, I mean, it's a good exercise, but it's not. I didn't really get anything from it. It didn't expand my rib cage. You know what I mean? He used to say that even, you know, my squat's supposed to expand the rib cage too. Okay. Uh, I like the Nautilus pullover. Because the Nautilus pullover, we, you know, you fuck with your, you know, with your elbows come down like this. And you drive with your elbows back. The Nautilus pullover is fucking one of the best exercises, you know. Now there's other machines that are knockoffs of the, you know, machine pullover where your hands come from behind your back and like that. Okay. But listen, you know, you, there's nothing, guys, there's nothing that's going to be like the upper version, the upper body version of squats. The, the upper bo if you were to ask most people what's the upper body version of squats, you'd probably say the bench. Not for nothing. If you're talking about expanding the rib cage, that's what the whole thing was supposed to be about. Stretching the rib cage, expanding the rib cage, expanding all the little cartilage muscles and ligaments and shit that you got in your rib cage and everything. That's you know, that was Schwarzenegger used to fucking claim that. Okay. But a lot of guys that do dumb you know, do that pullover also, you know, and because you do it over a bench with your back on it, uh, a, a lot of people think that that is good for, you know, lower lats. Depends on, you know, the old thing. You're supposed to take a deep breath. I know what you're talking about, Cosmo. I do. All right? But I would say the, 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 probably the greatest exercise for your upper body is a bench, bench press. I mean, you get triceps, you get front delts, you get shoulder, your whole shoulder, you know, you get triceps. It, it's, it's a fucking... And, and what it does for you, what the bench press... I don't like bench press. I want to bench press a show, but I don't like bench press. You know, it, it's... But what it does feel is... 
what squats do for the legs, you know, like do for your whole lower body. Squats help your upper body too, you know, with the breathing. I, I get it, the ribcage. I know what you're trying to say. Okay? Uh, dumbbell pullovers is an old school exercise. Me, I like to, you know, I didn't like them, to be honest with you. That's me though. You may love them, Cosmo. They may help you. You know what I mean? You may feel that it's expanding your rib cage. He, the whole idea is to, like with Schwarzenegger, would drop his ass, lean on a bench, drop his ass really low as as he pulled that thing, he would breathe, hold in the breath, and pull it out and drop the ass low. I, I get it. But, you know, if you're going to do pullovers and you're going to do them, I, I, most guys do them for the low lats, and it, I would do it on a machine like that, you know? That's, that's just me. I hope. It's probably not what you want to hear, okay? But if you're really going to equ equate an exercise that does so much for your body, like squats do, they do so much for your body, you got you to gotta, you gotta say fucking bench, bench press. And I'm sure a lot of guys will be like, oh, absolutely, you know what I mean? It's, it's you know, bench press is one of the, it's there, you know? Even though I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of benching anymore. But it you, you got to give bench, the bench press is one of the, you know, it's one of king exercises in the gym, you know? So, that, squats, deadlifts, I don't do deadlifts at all because I have bad lower back. But, you know, my son is an incredible deadlifter. He fucking is going into shows and shit. I don't know how much he deadlifts. We don't really talk too much about that shit, you know. But I know he's a fucking deadlifter and a, and a bencher and a squatter. He's more powerlifter than, than body. But he grows, like, forget about it. He's big ram. He's got fucking incredible thighs. He's a, he's a moose. His fucking shoulders are twice the size of mine. You know, he was one of those kids at school, like called Moose, you know what I mean? Because he had these giant fucking thighs, huge calves, never, th doesn't, have, he, could, he has calves like a pro body, but he doesn't even need to go in a fucking, you know, he's one of those, you know what I mean? Big hands and shit, and fucking palm your head like a basketball, but he's, a, he's, in, I'm not into that deadlifting stuff. All right, next. All right. <coughs> Corona. Just sit down, I'm kidding around. Fucking idiots running around with masks and shit. I see guys today cycling where I live. They're they're doing a cycling and shit. And they're wearing, wearing masks. Fucking momos. Anyway. Hey, Greg. Uh, oh, by the way. Felix Ortiz. That's what this is. It says, hey, Greg. What do you recommend to break through growth plateaus without the babanya? We got a natty bodybuilder in the house. All right. Felix, listen to me. That's a good question, and everybody's different, okay? Everybody has little things that, you know, I have a friend that would actually take a, like a week off because he felt like that would refresh his body a lot. I don't like that idea, but some guys do do it. He was, okay, so I was going to say, he was a natural champion, um, Peter Neff. It's the guy who got first taught Dave Palumbo, you know, like how to get ready for a show and everything. Um... And uh, he was my friend, you know, he was Dave's trainer and shit, but he was my friend way before Dave even knew him. You know, I was been friends with him since the 70s. I mean, he has a book out, I'm in his book. But anyway, uh, I don't like that. I don't like to really take time off. I'll tell you what you do, Felix, okay? I would push your plateaus, cut your rest periods between sets. Try to cut your rest periods. Do what I do. I mean, it, maybe you've seen my bicep workout, my tricep workout. I have it on my channel, Greg Valentino, you know, the YouTube. But I'm a firm believer in to, you know, to freshen shit up. You could add new exercises, okay, that you've, but they have to be exercises you feel. All right. So one of the things I used to do, okay, was I would make a list. This is what I do for biceps. This is what I do for tricep. I'm just using that, those I'd use those body parts, for example, but I would do every fucking, I would put every body part I did, and what I, exercises I did, sets of reps, and then I would assess it, and I sit back and I go, okay, let's see, I do this for biceps, this for biceps, this for biceps, you know, maybe if you three exercises, maybe if you want to do four, whatever, and then I would say, I feel this one, this one really still pumps me, I feel really good, but this one, I don't know, I'm stale, I don't really feel this anymore. So I would take that out and I'd put something else in. Do you follow me? So that everybody, every exercise I feel it, that I do, I feel. Okay? I, that's one of the things I would do. I, was change, I would change up my exercises a little bit and cut out the dead wood. Cut out the shit that's not really working for you. But the other thing I would do is definitely cut the rest periods. Cut them way down. Way down. 
if you go to my video with uh, with um, uh, what I do for the biceps, triceps, and stuff, you could you could use that. Even the leg video, you could use that in for everything. The rest periods, the way I do, like cut the rest periods out. Now, you may not want to do five, ten seconds, but five, ten seconds rest between sets. But that's what I would do. I cut that down, and that's what I do. And it gets you to do. do let me say, it's impossible to have a bad workout. It's almost it's impossible. And the other thing too is, I also do opposites sometimes. For instance, follow what I'm going to try to tell you. Let's say your body parts, uh, you know, I would do a little bit of hamstrings and then go do my, you know, my quads. I would do maybe, you know, two or three sets of, of maybe really, really high reps, really high reps, like 50 reps, but I would squeeze them and really make it contract to get the blood in there, really make the body work full extension all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, to the point where when I go do my quads, my hamstrings are pumped. Then I do my hamstrings after that, but that's just like a feeder almost, but an in-house feeder, an in-workout feeder, okay? Not like Rich Piano used to do where he'd lay on his fucking, you know, on his living room floor and do it. I'm talking about a, a feeder in the workout. So the same thing I would do for, bi let's say I'm going to do biceps. I would go to the fucking triceps. Before I would start my biceps, I would pump my triceps. So once I start my biceps, the biceps get, you know, I have to engorge the triceps first with blood, but then when I start my biceps, it's, it's, it's weird the way it works, but it works really, really well, so let's say I would do four, five sets maybe of, of 35 to 50 reps of V-bar press downs, but I would go all the way up, all the way down, lock, all the way up, all the way down, lock, all the way up, all the way, but I would do those five sets in less than five minutes, okay, I do want to, and then once you start your biceps, bro, you'd be like, oh my god, what a fuck, that's just a feeder for the triceps. It's not the workout. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, it's the same thing in hamstrings. It's the same thing. Sometimes I'll go and, I, you know, maybe I'll do like fucking some pull downs before I do my chest. It works. It's the fucking craziest thing. Opposites. It really works. It's the fucking craziest thing. Try something like that. Well, try, try cutting your rest periods. Do little things like that. Inject new exercises, which also take away the boredom of your workout. You follow me? And every one of those new exercises hit you. So you cut out the ones that don't work. Okay? Or the ones you're a little stale on. Don't think that if barbell curl's not pumping you anymore, or, or bench, even bench, if it's not working anymore, take a break, break from it and do something different. Don't think like I can, the only way that I'm going to get big legs is to... Dude, my legs are fucking jacked, bro. Jacked. Even right now sitting here. They're full. They're thick with blood. And I don't squat. I haven't squatted in years. Even though I just recommended you to squat. I think your squatting is good. But not, it's not for me And now at this point in my life. But what I'm trying to tell you is that. Don't think that if you don't squat you can't have big legs. Or you don't do barbell curl. You can't have big biceps or fucking. You know. It's, it, I, it, I call them tricep pullovers. Because I don't believe in skull crushers. That's how you get bad elbows. I go from behind that out. But whatever. The point I'm trying to make is that. Don't have it in your head. That if you don't feel like barbell curls, I, mean, I, I like to use that as an example. That if you're not feeling barbell curls, you can't cut them out because they're essential to building muscle. That's not true. That's not true. Okay? Find what's right for you. I can't tell you if you're stale or anything. Only you know that. All right? But to really change the workout up and really make the mind, change the mind up. When you change the workout up, Okay, and you do less low rest periods, and you do what I said, take the opposite body part and pump it first, and then do that body part. No rest, you know what I mean, low, you know, you're not doing a workout, you're doing a feeder, okay? You understand, like when I said do the triceps, then the bicep, you know, the hamstring, then the quad, it's a feeder, that's all it is. You do the feeder first, and then the quad, you understand, and then it, by the time you, you know, you get back to doing the, the actual hamstring workout, it, you know, your quads are pumped, now your hamstrings are re -pumped. It's just, it works really, really well. Try it. Let me know how you feel. But those are things that you can do, okay, as in natty. It's changing shit up, cutting the rest periods, doing the other thing that I told you. know, changing shit up, meaning cut out the uh, shit that doesn't work. And then try doing what I told you, opposite body parts. It really, it really does work. Remember, when you do your deltoids, don't go in there. 
and just start pressing behind. No, 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 no. no. You do rear delts first, work from the back forward. All right, your front delts get hit in almost everything you do. But anyway, go for the back, back. You do rear delts first, then side delts, then fucking front delts like that, okay? And if you do traps, I do traps with shoulders, then you can do your traps. Do things like that. Do routine backwards. If you're going to do, if you're going to do curls, if you're going to do, uh, when you do do, uh, like, for instance, biceps, you don't just go in there and start barbell curling, you know what I mean, when you start your biceps. I like to do either concentrate, but I like to do machine curls, then concentration curls, or something like that, and then, you know, like that. You got to split with dumbbell curls. You got to do what's right for you. I hope, I uh, hope, I'm not fucking confusing you, all right? All right. Let me know how you, let me, tell me what you think, Felix, okay? Tell, let me know how, how you feel about that. But if you try those things, and it keeps shit fresh. And all of a sudden you start pumping again and you'll grow. You know what I mean? It's hard when you're natty, bro. You hit plateaus a lot. When you're not on the babanya, bro. It's not easy. When you're on the babanya, forget about it. Especially if you're a hyper-responder. But anyway, all right, next question. All right, my boy here, Joshua uh, Ligotti. Wants to know, how do you deal with muscle knots? Uh, he said, now Joshua's one of my guys here, you know, he's always asking me questions, and he's a good guy. Uh, and he says he can't lift as, as heavy as usual, uh, mostly in the neck and in the shoulders. That's pretty fucking common. Um, I mean, you could. See, my girl, I know you guys don't get jealous. Don't get jealous. But my fucking girlfriend gives me back rubs and neck rubs every day, like three times. I don't even ask for it. She just likes doing it, you know what I mean? I think it's a fucking fetish. Shh, don't tell nobody. But, uh, no, she does. She'll do it for fucking 20 minutes. Most of you guys couldn't get your girl. You'd have to pay your girlfriend. Here, some shit got old. Now, give me a back rub. You know what I mean? Not my girlfriend. And my girlfriend's good. She gives it to my friends and everything. All my friends like, we're in a diner last night. And my friend's like, yo, dude. You know, and, and she'll go over there and she'll give him a back rub. She gave him a back rub for 15 minutes while we're eating. She likes to do that. She, and she's got a fucking incredible hand. So that helps. Okay. Now. Uh, and that's obvious, all right? But, you know, you might not have it like that, Joshua. You might not have a girl or girlfriend or whatever somebody's going to do that for you. Um, what do I recommend? I do recommend, like, you know, obviously heat, hot showers, heat loosens shit up. Don't do cold. Cold makes shit fucking forget about it. Cold is good for inflammation. That's why it's good for joints. Cold is good for joints. Do not put cold on a muscle where there's spasms and everything. It'll fucking get worse, okay? So we use heat. I like moist heat. You put it on, you know, hot showers. The other thing is, Joshua, start taking more minerals, okay? Take a good multi-mineral and get some good magnesium, potassium, and all that stuff because that's what also, and you get, I use the pink Himalayan salt, but we, we need iodine too, and that's in regular table salt. So I'll use a little bit of both. You could put a pinch of both in water, but you need to get minerals in there. You got to have minerals, potassium, magnesium, all of those things. Because that's what cramping does, you know. It, it comes from, uh, you know, it, 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 you know, minerals can cause that, okay. Lack lack of minerals. It's, it's simmer down some of you guys, okay. Don't harp on everything I fucking say. All right, this, this, is, this is momo science. It's not bro science. <clears throat> anyway, uh, you know, so you got to try things like that. It, it, a lot of times it's diet. You know, it's not the way you're working out and shit. Uh, I doubt it. You know, this working out's not really affecting. It. It's, just, it's usually it's nutritional. And once you get a knot, it sometimes is a pain in the balls. If it can't get massaged out or rubbed out or, you know, guys use, you know. Oh, let me tell you something. Your body builds, they all get fucking back rubs. They go and they get these guys that do, you know, the, the pressure point, trigger release, all that bullshit, you know. And the fucking fascia stretching and the muscle. And, the, you know, uh, you know they get people that rub out their muscles and rub out the kinks. Okay, it does work if you have somebody that can do that, you know. I'm just lucky. My girl's, like, into that. I don't ask for it. I don't say, can you give me a back rub? She does it, you know, all the time. But, um, I don't think there's a day, actually, where she hasn't given me a back rub. I've been with her for fucking 14 years, 15 years. And, uh, I've gotten a back rub every fucking time. You know what I mean? She, every day. She gets back rubs. I'm lucky like that. Okay. But, uh, so, you know, it, it's, it's, that helps. Heat helps to release that, Okay. But, uh, it, you know, when you got knots in your neck and in your shoulders and it's kinking and it, try nutritionally, 
try heat, okay? And if you can get somebody, if not, you're going to have to pay the shkarol. You know what I mean? But you have to go somewhere where somebody can help rub that out. Some chi some chiropractors, masseuses, you know what I mean? It, it, I, not most chiropractors, they don't know, you know, they're, they're not going to be able to do that. You know, they'll crack your fucking back and shit. But, you, you know, they, they might have somebody in their office that does that stuff. That's what I meant by the chiropractor, okay? But you get these people who specialize in it. Bodybuilders get it all the time, okay? So that's the best thing I could tell you, Joshua. I mean... Try the moist heat. Really let that shower, you know, hot shower run in there. Put some hot towels on there. Really, you know, relax it. But eat, take in, start taking in a lot more minerals. All right? It, 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 minerals are what causes that shit, too. So it's, it's a, it could be a deficiency. And make sure you, wait, I forgot to make that. Make sure you drink a lot of fluids, too. All right? My voice may sound funny because my, my throat is a little bit off. So give me, you know, give me help. I'm okay. Just, it's I got scar tissue in the throat, not here. That's from a fucking lymph node. That's from the throat. Okay, the, you know, the scars down there. All right. So all right, whatever. So that's what you do. I forgot about that too. You gotta, if you're gonna take it a lot of minerals, you gotta drink a lot of water too. That could that could be a number, huge, huge part of the problem. Say so you're not getting in enough fluids, not getting enough minerals, heat on the area. And if you can get a massage. There you go. That should really help you. All right? All right, Joshua. Thanks for hey, thanks for all your support, man. I hope that helps you. All right. All right. Unknown user. That's a fucking original name. All right, unknown user. Can I call you unknown? Or do I call you user? <laughs> all right, enough of that. Um... <laughs> Greg, I have worked out for 20 years naturally, and I hit my peak. I am interested in doing one steroid cycle just to add a little more size. One steroid cycle? They're like, dude, the steroids, the bobanya, bro. The bobanya is kind of like eating potato chips. You can't just eat one. Once you start doing that shit, you're like, okay. All right, wait a minute now. Once you rob the bank, you become a bank robber, man. You just... It's too easy. You just you're gonna do want to do more. But anyway, all right, we'll, we'll we'll go with one. All right. So you want to do one steroid cycle? Just to add a little more size. What is the best cycle for keeping your gains after the cycle ends? What? What is the best cycle for keeping your gains after the cycle ends? If you continue to eat and train hard. I thought you were asking me about what to take. You know, obviously, I like, to, you know, if you're going to start a cycle, it's, you know, it's like the meat, potatoes, and the fucking, you know, whatever else you got there, the side dishes, okay, but the meat and potato, the meat of the cycle is testosterone. I believe in building all cycles around testosterone. Uh... You know, some guys will take their trend, you know, but. And don't take trend with testosterone, don't take trend with that guy, don't take. You don't need trend for the fucking first cycle, but. But you're not asking me that, are you? You're asking me what is the best cycle for keeping your gains after the cycle ends? I mean, you know, it clomid is what you really need for follow, did FSH hormone, clomid. And you need gonadotrophin, which is ACG. But you you should notice unknown. I mean, this is not like uh, this is not unknown information. This is get it unknown. I, I don't. I'm really a little perplexed. I, did, I sh didn't read this psych. This I didn't read this psych. I didn't read this question right right when I took it. Um, because it's it's a simple thing, bro. You get, you need the FSH hormone to help get your body producing more, stimulate your own. Gonadotrophin, okay, your own HCG basically, and use the HCG to stimulate your balls to, you know, the lay dig cells to get your balls going and all this other bullshit. And then you maybe get a little anti-estrogen, you know. Now some guys use letrozole, but that you know, you know, if you're on, you don't need letrozole if you're going to do one cycle. And I, I really find it hard to believe that you're going to be able to do just one cycle. It's not, you know. Because you get addicted to this shit, bro. Not addicted, but, you know, you love it. Oh, bro, look what are fucking happening. Especially you make all these gains. You know, um, 
I, I think I know. I, I think I see what you're trying to ask me because you're afraid that if you do just one cycle and you know then you go off, you don't want to lose the gains you got from the one cycle. Of course, you're gonna lose some stuff because you know you're not on shit anymore. You're gonna shut your body down, so you need you need the clomid, you need the HCG, and you could do a little Novadex if you want, or you know aromatase, uh, uh, you know. Uh, but I don't think you know anti aromatase. I don't think you need you know. I don't know. I, I, you're asking me a question. It's pretty much like fucking kind of like everybody knows what to do. You have to do just to get your body back, all right? On a mild steroid cycle, a mild one, okay? You don't need a little bit of Novavix. It's probably all you need. You don't need all that. Uh, all those other anti-aromatases fucking assassinate estrogen. You don't want to assassinate it. You just don't want it to flood. A little bit. You know, for a first cycle, you'll be fine. That's just a really odd quote because that's like such common knowledge. It's just it's a, you know what I mean? It's just like, a, Greg, is drinking water good during a workout? What? You know what I mean? Like, just take your PCT, you know, the standard PCT, and it, that everybody knows what to do, you know, and you'll be fine. I'm sorry if I'm not answering this question with you, I, but I don't understand it, have, you know. A clomid ACG and a little bit of anti aromatase Not the not anti aromatase but an anti estrogen. Which is the, the Novadex is fine. A little, that's it. Uh, I don't know what to say about that one. This this uh, you know this is like a common knowledge thing and just eat good and work out and continue working, and that's it. You know now, you know if you're gonna do I uh, I. Uh, uh, Figure once you do one, I don't see why I stop there. Just continue to do it. You're either natty or not natty. And I'm, you know, you're going to be those one and done. Uh, whatever. All right, sorry about that question, guys. I, I don't know if... Whatever. Olympia Bound wants to know. Olympia Bound. What health advice would you give the average competitive steroid user who is on anti-estrogens as well as PCT. It's like the question a guy just asked me. Uh, is there any way to keep your body healthy when doing a good amount of papanya? All right. Okay. I see what he's asking. He's saying he's a guy who's he's saying here, would you give the average and competitive steroid user? So the guy, the average guy that goes on steroids, uses steroids, is, you know, he goes on a nice healthy cycle and competitive bodybuilder. Well, he's saying, what could I do to keep your body healthy? One of the, you know, obviously, uh, taking drugs, He's he realizes that taking drugs, taking the babanya is fucking, you know, strain on your system. So what, so if you're on the babanya, what can we do to make our body try to keep its health? Because it's not healthy to take all that shit. We we already know that. Okay? And don't give me that bullshit. Yes, it is. Steroids are very healthy. You know what I'm talking about. When you're bodybuilding, if you're taking a fucking TRT and taking steroids, it's two different fucking things. Okay? You know that. Okay? It's the it's the equivalent of a bodybuilder taking uh, insulin and a fucking diabetic taking insulin. Both are taking insulin. It's two different things. The diabetic's taking, the, you know, two IUs. And you know, and we're bodybuilders taking fifty I get so let's let's get that straight. So this guy's talking about heavy, you know, drug use, okay? Competitive bodybuilders, so a lot of babanya in him. Um we need to I, I like to take uh milk thistle, evening primrose oil, uh you know, I take Himalayan, live fifty two. Um you know, you could take the cucumber and, and all that other shit, uh, glutathione, and, um, and he's all for the liver, by the way, okay, NAC, and the NAC is really good if you take it a Tylenol and all that stuff, but, you know, I like to take it anyway, so I'll throw in some NAC in there, okay, because we want to take care of the liver, the liver's the main thing when you're taking steroids, okay, and, and obviously, I want to take in a good amount of minerals, all right, because we want to keep the fucking, we want to, you know, we want our body to run really well. I do, I take a lot of B vitamins as well. I like to take a good B complex because there's blood shit running in my family. You know, my, my grandfather died of leukemia. My mother was the closest thing to a female hemophiliac. 
okay, and my uncle, her brother, died of, of leukemia, so, and my father had problem, and my father had a, 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 anemia, so we have blood, so I like to take, you know, B12, B complex, uh, folic acid, shit like that, because the liver is the thing we really want to worry about, especially with steroids, the liver, obviously the heart, um, Co you know, CoQ10 and shit. You ask it about like what we, what we could take, because you don't want to add more drugs. There's drugs that you can take, but adding more drugs to an already babanya, uh, babanya body, which is, means you know the steroid body. We don't want to add more drugs. The last thing your body needs, the last thing your liver needs, is more of that. Now I know some of you can say, well, the liver struggles to maintain, you know, break down all those vitamins and nutrients. Simmer down. Simmer down with that, okay? Everybody knows that we need, like, you know, and all of that good stuff to keep the liver going. We want to worry about the kidneys, okay? So by taking minerals, we want to keep that blood pressure. Try to help a little bit with the blood pressure and, and get the kidneys to function right. A lot of fluids. A lot of fluids, man. A lot of fluids. We want those kidneys working because the kidneys... If your blood pressure gets high, it's a kidney killer. And that's what happens with a lot of bodybuilders. That's why you hear about them getting kidney, you know, they all get kidney failure, renal failure, okay? You drink a lot of fluids, and it's because, it, and, and the fucking, let me tell you something, once the liver starts giving you trouble, the fucking kidney, the liver and the kidneys and the heart, those three, you know what I mean? You have to try to, I, I, obviously keeping the sugars down and the carbs down too, you don't want to stress all that stuff, you don't want to stress the liver. Okay, you want to keep the kidneys moving. You know, you could take a good kidney supplement as well. You know, with there's all kinds of like, you know, with asparagus, fucking, you know, with asparagus uh, uh, extract, the fucking um, dandelion extract. There's a whole bunch of good stuff that will help the kidneys. Okay, I like to take potassium. All right, you know, sometimes you take a little bit of fucking. Uh, you know, I know some guys don't like to do this. Tony Hughes does it. You know, take the fucking. Uh, which we'll call it, uh, that I even have it in there, Jesus Christ, cream of tartar, you know what I'm saying, things like that, a little bit of all that will help your body naturally, because that's what he wants to know, what can he take naturally to keep the body going, we don't want to take, we don't want to take drugs, bro, you know, like, to help when we're on the babanya, you don't want to do that, you don't want to add more drugs to a fucking already drugged up body, okay, does that make sense to you, does that, but you do want to worry about your liver, so that's what we want to do. You could even take all kinds of desiccated liver and stuff like that too. This is the old that's old school, bro. I haven't done that, but you know, I do take all those other things I just told you about, all right? Because the liver is important. Very important. When you take anytime you're on a babanya, your liver fucking enzymes, everything go fucking out of whack. Okay? It's problems. The kidneys, the reason why guys fail in the kidneys is because they said send the blood pressure through the ceiling. Once the blood pressure is through the ceiling, fucks up the kidneys, trouble, trouble, right? That's why you don't want to gain all that water weight either. Fucking kills the kidneys. Good potassium supplement. That's why I take the fucking cream of tartar and everything. Good potassium supplement. Get some good solid minerals in yourself. Magnesium, potassium, all of those things. I take a multi-mineral. I, do I have it? Uh, I don't have it here. Uh, but, you know, I take Palumbo shit, you know what I mean? Uh, the the uh, mineralized, uh, the vita, whatever it is, vitamin and mineralized, whatever that shit is, I take. I have it in another room. I get it for free, so I'll sum it down. But, um, and if it's free, it's for me. But, you know, it's stuff like that. That's, uh, who cares for it? Olympia Bound. That's what you have to do. You have to worry about the liver, the kidneys, and the heart. Usually, you know, all of those things, water retention Heavy, gaining a lot of mass puts a strain on the heart. So gain mass slowly, you know what I'm saying? And also, strain on the kidneys. More bodybuilders have trouble with the kidneys than anything. Blood pressure goes up, kidneys go up. Does that make sense? And a great, good amount of liver stuff with B vitamins and all that. Because the liver is fucking key too. Your liver goes, you're fucked. I'm just telling you. All the bodybuilders seem to have the same problems. And it's due to the babanya. And, you know. Hey, listen, I'm pro babanya, but you gotta do the right thing by your body, too. Okay, so be smart.
Well, like gaining, you don't want to gain 30 pounds from a cycle. I know you do, but you really don't. You know what I'm saying? Not health-wise, you don't. It's trouble. All right, I hope that helps. Let me sum this shit up for you guys. Listen to me. I've told you this a gazillion times. I don't know why you guys, some of you guys still don't get this. You are an individual. Because Tom Platt squatted doesn't mean that that's going to make your thighs bigger. You have to find out what's right for you. You're the Dr. Frankenstein, and you're also the Frankenstein monster. You have to, you're, the, you're the science experiment, and you're also the mad scientist. Okay? Now, let me tell you something also, which you, Tom Platt said, I just said about him squatting. Okay? All these guys, I get guys saying shit to me about low reps. Six reps ain't going to do shit, bro. If you're going to do that shit, forget it. Throw it out the window. Okay? That heavy shit in the head, go everywhere, go home. Tom Platt's would take 315 and do it 50 times. 50 reps. With 315. Ronnie Coleman, Katie Barrow, like 400 pounds, 4 fucking 50 or whatever the fuck it was. And he would get 12 reps with it. He's not over there taking fucking 400 pounds or going on a leg press and put every fucking weight like I see all the time on these fucking videos where guys put every weight in their gym on there. And they got like fucking 1,500 pounds and then they're going down like this and then up and then down like this and then up. Go home. That's not fucking leg press. Ronnie Coleman would do that shit, could put 20 plates on there and he'd go all the way down and then all the way up and all the way down and all the way up and he'll get 15 reps with that shit. Don't get that fucker go heavy go home shit. You want to make the muscle do the work. Just because those guys, what's heavy for Ronnie Coleman, is certainly not what's heavy for you, okay? And vice versa. So, what I'm trying to tell you is you're the mad scientist. Figure shit out. Don't be afraid to try different things. Don't get bound, like Lee Labrada told me back in 1988. Don't get bound by those fences in your brain. Okay, there, I have to squat, or I have to bench, or I have to do this many, you know, you know, do one reppers, take the bench and just push one rep up and hook it and shit. Like that. Don't, no powerlifters don't even do that. Okay, I train with world champion powerlifters. They don't train like that. Okay, you have to find out what's right for you. Get that shit out of your head about going heavy all the time. And if you're going to do the babanya, do it responsibly. And don't try to put on fucking 40 pounds, 30 pounds, or 20 pounds. Don't try to do that. Because you're going to put on a lot of water weight and you're going to put a strain on your heart. Okay? People that go yo-yo up and down and weight, who have don't even work out, they're not doing it with steroids. They just gain a lot of weight and then they lose a lot of weight. And they go, on. Oh, that's a strain on the heart. Okay? Don't do that. You don't have, when you're on the babanya... You're gaining muscle, okay? And muscle's different from fat. Gabish, because a 300-pound fat guy could live a lot longer than a 300-pound muscular guy. you say bullshit. It's true. You know why? Because fat. Believe it or not, fat gets in your organs. It's not good. Fat gets around your organs. It's not great, okay, either. But there's not a lot of blood flow in fat. So it's not going to put the strain on your heart. Unless it's in your arteries and shit, you're in trouble. But you're not going to put the strain on the heart. Body fat on your gut is not going to put the strain on the heart. The way fucking putting on fucking 30 pounds of muscle in fucking 15 weeks or something like that. It's not good, bro. Even in a year. It's not good. Weighing 300 pounds of muscle is going to cause so much blood flow that it puts a strain on your heart. It's a fact. Sorry. I know some of you guys don't want to hear that. I know you guys don't want to hear that. But it's true. Did, how many people do you see? 80-year-old fucking super jacked guys. Yeah, you may say, Oh, I saw this 80-year-old guy in our gym and he's really big. He's built. And he may be low in body fat and have little knotty muscles all over him. But he's not fucking 300 pounds of muscle. Okay? But there's plenty of old fat people. Because fat 
doesn't call the amount of blood, which makes the heart pump more and harder to get that blood in muscle. Gabish, does that make sense now? You get what I'm trying to tell you? I've told you this before, but I'm just going to say it again. When you have a lot of muscle on you, your heart's going to pump a lot harder. Okay? A lot harder. Because it's got a fucking... There's a big demand for blood flow for a lot of muscle. There's not a big demand for blood flow in a fat bastard. You got bish? Yeah, I know already about the fat in the arteries. I get it. Simmer down with that. But there's a lot more older fat people in this world than older jack people. I can tell you that. All right. Just do the babanya. But do the babanya smart. Don't try to gain it all at once. And be careful. Do what I told you. Take the fucking... Take the livers... You know, all those liver supplements I just named. I'm not going to go through the whole litany. You know, do all the shit I just told you. Take all that stuff. It's very important. There's a reason why guys are getting liver problems and fucking kidney problems. The liver and the kidneys are fucking... Bro, they're like, you know, brother and sister. Hey, I'm fucked up, so now you're going to be fucked up. I'm just telling you. Be careful. All right? So put your questions here. You want better questions than these? Put your questions here. All right? All right. Listen to me. Not fucking around. Be good to your girl. Be good to your wife. Be good to your significant other. Pay your fucking child support. Don't be a fucking momo for the rest of your life. I, I don't want to say that. You Don't be a fucko. You're already a momo. Don't upgrade. All right? But I love you guys. You're my momos. Put your fucking comments down here. Alright? Alright. Stop fucking around and see you in the next video.